Okay, when we speak of this same period, um, particularly after uh, 1865, the end of the uh, Civil War, uh, there are a number of factors that become very, very important in the expansion and at the same time containment of the fall movement of black people and their art as well. Um, perhaps the most important thing in terms of the fall momentum would have been this period of reconstruction. Uh, whites in the South uh, lost their rights as citizens as they were in open revolt against their nation and were considered by all standards uh, traitors, uh, at least for this short period of time. Um, and blacks who were not in open revolt and had this new freedom could vote, had access to public transportation, had access to greater employment, um, ran for public office and won. As a matter of fact, uh, there was actually a black governor, uh, PBS Pickback, uh, who was elected governor of the state of Louisiana. Uh, there was this very, very f f rapid, uh, unbelievable expansion of black enterprise, black pride, uh, black uh, economic and political power. Uh, and of course, we all know if you study history, it did not last long. Because almost immediately before they lost power, the powers that be in the South started passing what is known as Black Codes. Went Marcellus has an album called Black Codes from the Underground. It's about this uh, insidious um, evil that took place. And these laws were passed to limit what black folks could do. You can buy land here, but not there. You can buy this kind of land, but that, that kind of land. You cannot get loans, you cannot do this. You cannot ride on this uh, uh, train anymore. You can't, just limitation after limitation after limitation. Um, so you had reconstruction that opened things up and almost immediately you had black codes and some of the deals made between North and South that pretty much ended Reconstruction about 11, 12 years after it started. In the meantime, as we are following the effects of the Civil War and these predominantly brass bands, but some woodwinds, clarinets particularly, um, almost every area of the country had black soldiers who had served in the Civil War and therefore you also had a few musicians who would teach others, younger ones, people in the rural areas on plantations, etc. So music started, expanded very rapidly as well and was used for picnics, for parades, for social events, eventually in New Orleans for funerals, for you name it. If it was a time of jubilation, you had live music. As I said earlier, a lot of these uh, uh, black musicians stayed in the military and became a part of the regular U.S. Army. Um, I actually have a, uh, a grand uncle who served uh, with Roosevelt in uh, Cuba. So there was this patriotism among these newly free blacks and they did serve freely uh, wherever their government uh, did send them. Um, at the same time, uh, this became uh, a way of uh, financing uh, benevolent uh, uh, situations uh, within the black community. Uh, there were a lot of orphans as a result of the Civil War and whatnot, and families being broken up through slavery and whatnot, and these benevolent organizations would organize little musical groups among the kids to go out and raise money to support the activities they had in trying to educate and uplift uh, their people. Um, there were the minstrel shows, a very, very important uh, aspect where you had these traveling 
groups of people, they were like a variety show on television where you have comics, you have singers, uh, you have musicians of the highest quality because most of these musicians were military trained musicians. Um, and they were traveling around in various groups. You had business enterprises among blacks where they had their own mental show, not blacks who were working with whites or working for whites, but blacks who were working for and with other blacks as a business enterprise and an entertainment enterprise within their own communities in order to advertise these mental shows at nights. During the day, you'd have a parade. And here come the marching bands such as you have in New Orleans now, except that now they're out of the military, so they're not just restricted to uh, playing John Philip Sousa and military marches. They can play spirituals and blues and ragtime. And so you had this music being played and expanded all over the country instrumentally. And a lot of the early players would play through the instruments as if they were singing with high falsettos and moans and groans and all the things that early blues singers would and could do. Um, it is important to note that some of the younger performers during the minstrel shows became some of our heroes in the early days of jazz. For instance, the father of the blues, W.C. Handy, started his career as a quartet player and then later a band leader in a minstrel show. The great Gertrude Ma Rainey started with a minstrel show. The great Bessie Smith, Queen of the Blues, started with minstrel shows. There's a rumor that in his very, very early career, the reason Dizzy Gillespie was so, well, what can I say, crazy, is that in his early days, he performed as a part of a minstrel show. So these are some of the other influences that expanded the music coast to coast, allowed for blues and ragtime to become instrumental, and created a generation of black entertainers who had regional and national prominence that continued into the formal development of the jazz era. I most certainly hope that this part of our discussion uh, has been uh, informative and helpful to you. I hope you've enjoyed it. and. Uh, Thank you very much uh, for listening. It most certainly has been a great journey for me uh, to do this research.